to a well-designed business. My name is Luann Nigara, and I'm so glad you found this podcast. Together with my husband, Vince, and our partner, Bill, we have grown our company, Window Works, from the ground up. So I know and I understand the challenges you face in running your interior design business. I also know that your talent alone isn't enough to ensure your success. So on this podcast, we talk about strategies and practical steps to help you grow your business. But make no mistake about it. We have our share of fun here too, mixed in with those aha moments that I love so much. This isn't fluff. Nobody has time for that. Whether you are a new interior designer or a seasoned designer, I am here to help you create and to manage the kind of interior design firm that you dream of. It's straight talk and it's action. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hi, welcome to A Well-Designed Business. It's Power Talk Friday, and today's show is sponsored by Nancy Ganskaufer and the Profit Insiders. Today, we have Leslie Myrick with us. Leslie has joined forces with Nancy and is now an assistant business coach in Nancy's signature group coaching program, the Profit Insiders for Interior Designers. And true to how Nancy and Leslie work, Leslie is here to teach a lesson that you can take away with you today so that you can make an improvement in your business today. We're going to talk about the value of local marketing and networking. And Leslie knows that local marketing is a more than joining a group, a BNI or any other group. While these are good organizations to join and you certainly can get value from them, Leslie knows that the best way to land local clients is simply by getting out there and meeting people. She talks about how to incorporate local marketing into your online strategy and how to measure the success of your local marketing efforts, as well as spending some time telling us about Profit Insiders and how to determine if their program is a right fit for you. Okay. Now you might remember Leslie. She has appeared on the show three times as a designer, recounting how she built her business after moving to new cities multiple times. Also, she talked about how she incorporated e-design into her own interior design business. So we will put those links in the show notes as well. But for now, let's meet Leslie. Let's hear about local marketing and let's learn about Profit Insiders. Hey, Leslie, thanks so much for joining me on a well-designed business today. Hello, Luann. I am so happy to be back here with you. I, You know what's funny? I was just thinking about it. This is, is this the first time you're here since you're working with Nancy? So you were on the podcast two times before or three, three as Three times yourself. before <laughs> as little baby designer figuring her way. And then about two years ago, I joined Nancy Ganzikoffer as an associate coach. So I'm still running my design firm and also doing the coaching. So yes, this is the first time I'm here with my official coach hat on. <laughs> I, well, you know, it's funny that you just said that with your official coach hat on it. On, I remember from the first time meeting you, you were always very proactive as far as business practices and thinking about how to work on your business and not just in the weeds of your business. And yes, you might have been a newer designer at that point and all the things, but you always had that extra layer of thinking going on about your business. So it doesn't surprise me at all after eight more years of being a designer that you are quite capable to help other designers build their businesses. It just seems like a total progression, of nat- a natural progression for you. Well, thank you. I love doing it. It's so amazing to connect with other designers, to support them. I felt like that was hugely missing. I mean, I started my career, I graduated in 05. So it's mm-hmm. been a minute yeah. and we all know things have changed. So I'm glad to be able to do the coaching. Nancy wants me to just coach full time and I am not ready to give up design yet. So it's been a good balance for me as well. And I tell our designers all the time, I'm in the trenches with them. I'm not just sitting on my high horse saying things that sound nice. I'm walking the walk. I'm doing the work as well alongside them and quite frankly, making mistakes and learning and sharing my knowledge with all the designers in our Profit and Sires Academy and all the other ways that Nancy's coaching world touches designers. Yeah. You know, it's funny because I recognize the value that you are a working designer and working with coaching designers. And I would tell you if Nancy and I have very similar backgrounds, Um, there's a lot that's different in our backgrounds, but there's a lot that's very similar. And 
while not, neither one of us are actively working in the like trenches any longer, when you spend three and four decades in working in the trenches and you never leave, you go from working in them to talking about them the way she and I do every single day, every single week. I think that there's no wet, no, there's, it's 100% that there's value there and yeah. that there's a perspective there. Cause it's like, it's like, it's like age old business advice. Right. But I love the fact that you are in the, in the trenches and that the two of you together bring that to the table. And that is pretty uh, powerful combination is my guess. Yeah. It's been a good fit and we've gotten such great feedback from the designers in our coaching programs that, you know, Nancy's got her incredible wheelhouse of mindset and niche is rich and broad is broke. <laughs> and she teaches that great side of it. And what was lacking was just the technical stuff. How do you use design software? Those nitty gritty things that as a designer, I'm able yes. to bring as well. So it's been a really good fit. And yeah, I can't believe it's been two years. It's been amazing. I know. I know. It's crazy. Well, good for you. I'm glad that you two found each other because you're a good fit together. Um, and it's funny because you both have big personalities. <laughs> you, you know, neither one of you are shy. You both yeah. have big personalities, but you fit together really nicely. You do compl- I mean, I've seen you. I spent the whole week with you at Luann Live together and you, you're you like two peas in a pod. And that also, I think... You know, when you get coached by people, it's like when you like Vinny and I running a team for all these years, it's like people like to know the people that are leading them. Yeah. Like each other and get along with each other. It feels safer. It feels more authentic. It feels better, doesn't it? It does. And that's so much a part of like, it's so important when you are looking for a coach, working with a coach, there has to be a fit. There mm-hmm. are a bajillion coaches doing amazing things out there. And it's, you know, how do you fit with that coach? Do they resonate with you? Do they talk in a way you like? Do you like them? Right. So thank you. I, Nancy's amazing. And it's been so fun. I mean, truly, this is a really fun job. Like it's a blessing <laughs> to get to do this every day and play with wallpaper and then talk to designers. That's amazing. It's amazing that you're able to do that many hats because you still have children that are in the house. I do. You know, you've got the design business and this. So you're one very busy lady. Yes, but I have a lot of boundaries. (laughs) I have a lot of restrictions on my time, which is necessary and healthy. So it's, it's, yeah, it's a good place right now. I'm very happy about that. Good for you. Good for you. So today, of course, we're going to be talking about the Profit Insiders Academy, which is the coaching program, the signature coaching program that the two of you are running over there. Um, And we're also going to be talking about marketing today. So what I always do, sponsored show or not, is I like for you guys to come on and teach us something, not only so we get a lesson out of it, but so that they understand the the, the power of working with you and understanding, you know, what you understand and what you bring to the table. Today, we're talking about marketing, and you guys suggested to me that you wanted to concentrate on local marketing. So talk to me about that, Leslie. Where are we going with this? What's the point of view? What do we need to know? All right. Well, we all know as designers that online marketing is important. That is a no-brainer. You need a great website, Instagram, Google My Business. I mean, that's all the stuff that in your, what, thousand plus episodes of the show, there is a wealth of knowledge there. And that is important. Anytime a new client finds you, they're going to search for you. They're going to Google you. But think about it. Where is the majority of your work actually taking place? It is most likely within about an hour radius of where you live. Not always, but I would say for most of us, our big, juicy in-person projects are local. And we're going to talk today about why local marketing is so important, how to increase local engagement, and how to measure the success of your local marketing. And I feel like this is sort of the, I don't want to say unsexy stuff, but it's not like (laughs) the shiny website. It's get out from behind your computer and go meet people, which it's old tough. school. It's it old school. school. It's like basic back to basics marketing, yeah. right? Well, and for someone like you, you're like, let me out of this podcast booth so I can exactly. go talk to some humans. And for me, I'm like, I'm good staying behind my computer for a week. Like, I'm okay if I don't see another soul. But we are going to dive into the hows and some just some ways to make this happen because I understand as an introvert myself, it can be uncomfortable, the local marketing side of it. It's easy to hide behind a computer and do a social media post to spiff up your website, to update your portfolio. And I'm not discounting those as important things, but local marketing is so important because this is a business. This is an industry built on relationships. It is built on who you know and who they know and who they can connect you with. And I don't mean that in like the sleazy salesy way, right. but the more, the longer I do this, the more I realize 
networking and in-person local marketing is just making friends. It's getting Mm -hmm. to know people who run your local coffee shop or you're on a church committee with, or you see at the gym. I had a consultation call today with someone who met me at the gym. So you Mm -hmm. never know when you get out from behind that desk and just (laughs) walk around, talk to people, what's going to happen and what kind of connections you can make to grow your local presence. Mm. What I love is, and I don't want to go over what you said is that if you really analyze it, probably most of your projects are within an hour of you, like, or referred to you by somebody within an hour. And the thing about that is it brought me back when you said that back in 2020, I did a mastermind with my cousin Eileen and um, we had 3 million plus businesses in it. So you had to be doing 3 million in revenue or Mm -hmm. more. And of course, the reason was I've talked about on the show before, it was an emergency mastermind. We like the world shut down and you've got these big businesses. There was no business that was going to be comfortable with being jeopardized, but a $3 million, $4 million, $5 million businesses, these are people with like huge payrolls. Yes. This is Like, this is not like, oh, darn it. I'm not going to make my money this month. It's like, oh, I'm not going to make the money and I have bills to pay, (laughs) like like big bills, right? And so we put together this quick uh, emergency mastermind. And I remember Susan Winterstein from Savvy Giving Mm -hmm. was in the mastermind. And the first week, what we asked the ladies in the mastermind to do was go back through the last year and literally make a chart of every lead source for every current client. So all of 2019, it was like May, uh, April of 2020. And whenever you do that, and that's one of the first things I have all my chairman of the boards do also, yes, is because when you do that, Now it removes the, oh, pretty much all my customers come from Instagram. It's like, really? But Instagram where? Like, oh, their friend Sally told me about them. And then I went to Instagram. But then when I told you how I heard about you, I said Instagram. But it really wasn't. It was my friend Sally, right? And so, and the thing was, what was interesting was, to your point, Susan came back and she said that the overwhelming majority of her leads came from her Facebook group because she has a huge consumer facing Facebook group. But then to your point, take it a step further. You want to say they're social media, but they are people within probably a 30 mile radius of her that happen to call it Facebook because that's where she's local marketing to them. But it's not like trying to go get a customer from San Diego out to Boston. Right. Well, that's such a great point because one of the tips that we do have is to join local Facebook groups, right. moms groups, parents groups, high end groups, meetup groups, hobby groups. You're right. They are online, but you are connecting directly with people locally. Mm-hmm. Yes. So there you go. You yeah. can stay behind your computer a little bit if you want. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> I mean, it's one tactic, but the idea of it is it's funny because Window Works over the years has gotten tons of leads from the local mom's Facebook groups, the ones that we're not even in because we're not allowed to join it because we're not a local mom. You know what I'm saying? So, but you build your reputation, but there are the ones that you can join. So I love, first of all, is that local marketing is not dead. No. This is the point. Yeah. And that there is a way to do it as an introvert. And when you really know your data, you might learn, like most of us, that probably the biggest percentage of our clients are from a local radius, right? Yeah, I would agree with that. And in my own experience, I track every lead. It's on my intake form. How did you hear about us? And I love your point, Luann, about Instagram, and I'm air quoting <laughs> that, might not just mean Instagram. So right. there is, it's more nuanced as you get to know that client. But I will say the projects that came from Instagram, from Google search, which can be great, in my business, they tend to have not turned into great projects or they've not been as good as ones where you know, they met me at an event. I spoke at a junior league event in December and that led to a great client or there are friends with a client of mine or something like that. So there's, this is such an intimate business. I mean, you are in people's underwear drawer the first time you meet them. Like this is a (laughs) weird industry we're in where it's very personal. You're in people's marriages, their money, their most private spaces. And I find a lot of those big juicy projects are coming from referrals from your community, from your local relationships, because this isn't something that, you know, the high-end luxury client is probably not Googling interior designer near me. And not to say there no. aren't people doing that. And you, get, I've gotten great clients that way too. But there is something about 
a niche of people who are at a certain level who are going to be turning to their friends, their community, their boards, their colleagues to find out who is the best person in the city for this job. Right. Well, you know, what's interesting is I find that this happens with all, all of us Mm -hmm. in all the ways we engage in a behavior unconsciously in our own lives that we then don't apply when it comes to our businesses. So think about anything that you have bought, purchased, you know, engaged, like, would you go and find a hairdresser off of Google? Right? Like you might ultimately get the phone number from Google, but you're going to say to somebody that you like the way your hair is done. Like who does your color? Who does this? Would you get a lawyer out of like, I was going to say the yellow pages as if they exist anymore. Right. But it's like, it, we don't, you don't do it. We don't do it for the things, but yet we think that those things are going to be the stranger contacts that somebody's going to, to your point, hire something as intimate as an interior designer. It's, intimate getting your hair done is pretty intimate Mm -hmm. and I don't mean physically I mean like importance wise it's like I'm gonna get it done and if you do a crappy job I'm gonna look dumb for six weeks (laughs) like like right and so it's it's not intimate in physicality but it's intimate in the level of personal that it is it feels personal not intimate it feels personal and so why would we think that somebody would hire a tier designer that they can't really kind of gather and get to know more than just their name before reaching out, right? Yeah. And it's it's whether they say there's the seven degrees of touching, right? So maybe they saw you on Instagram. Maybe they saw you at, they, they know you from the PTA line. And then they, you know, something else. And then all of a sudden, here you are at the Junior League doing a thing. You're like, oh, my God, that's that same woman. She's like, wow, I keep seeing her. And now the relationship has been building through the, oh, and I think she goes to my gym and I think her kid is in my kid's class. Like those are the the local things that you need to take advantage of, right? Yes. And you made such a great point there. I think there's newer data and forgive me if I don't have the numbers exactly right, but it used to be seven to 10 touch points or interactions. I believe it's more like 15 to 18 now because Whoa. everyone is so saturated with everything all the time. So it takes more getting in front of people, being seen by people before they're ready to commit to hiring you. Yeah. And so get out from behind your desk, go work at a coffee shop, let someone see you. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's funny because like when we talk about introverts, right? Mm-hmm. So we're not talking about you have to go to like a BNI meeting with 40, you know, like, I don't know, people you've never heard of, you're never going to talk to again, right? It is like going to your gym and being open, looking up and smiling at people, right? Like, how did you make that connection at your gym? You know what it was is I had, she'd see me on Instagram, but okay. I had um, magnets on my car with my business name. Oh. So while it's parked in the parking lot, that was part of it too. What's funny is we spoke on the phone this morning. I don't actually, like, I don't think we've ever spoken in person, but she saw me there. She recognized me from Instagram, reached out to me. So see, it's the different contact. So it's exactly. three times on Instagram. That's the fifth time I've seen her car in this parking lot. Yeah. She must be an okay person because we like the same things, you know, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, and if people are looking for ideas, we've got a laundry list here. So buckle oh, up. Good. If you Let's are go. wanting to find places to <laughs> chat with people, think of restaurants, salons, gyms, schools, coffee shops, specialty high-end grocery stores. Are there events at your chamber of commerce? Any local publications you can reach out to about writing an article for and getting known locally? Home shows, financial planners. Um, oh, what's personal trainers. Think of who knows your people as well. Sports games, football games, barbecues, charity events, church committees, fundraising. I mean, just get, (laughs) I can't say this enough, just get out of your house and go somewhere where people are and find a way to talk naturally and say hi. Yeah. And see where it takes you. Well, I love that you have the sign on your car because that's a passive way for just somebody. Honestly, I'd be interested you should ask her. 
How many times did you see my car in the parking lot before you decided to call me between Instagram and the parking lot? Because she probably is going to say X amount of times, right? Mm -hmm. And if, if you didn't have it, it would just be the Instagram thing, right? But technically, the sign on the car is the second of three. The first is in Instagram. The second is the car. And the third is that you're a member of the same gym, even though you haven't met each other at the gym. Those are three, like... Hey, three walks like a duck, talks like a duck things. True. And because it's the gym specifically, it also shows her that I'm aligned with her interests and values. I'm not going to the gym to get business. I don't don't like going to the gym. But again, like when you're at these places, they're places you would be going anyway. And if that's where your ideal clients are going to be, they already know, oh, this person is interested in the same kind of things I am. We're about the same age. Maybe we have kids the same age. There's things that become natural connection points Mm -hmm. where people subconsciously realize, oh yeah, that's the designer for me. I like her. I like him. I've seen him around. He looks like a nice guy. Yeah. And the thing about it is, is that sometimes topics like this, the brain goes, I know this. (laughs) But then my question is, but do you do it? (laughs) Like knowing it and doing it are two different things, right? Um, And it's funny because we have one of our members in Exciting uh, Windows, Mike Lynn. So he's a window treatment professional, multiple million dollar business up in the Rochester, New York, Buffalo, New York area, right? Mm -hmm. And do you know what he told all of us? That for years now, and he's got kids, he's, you know, married with kids and all the things for years now, every single time, and his kids, I think, are like high school age now or college, but they're old enough to order food on their own, okay? So the thing is, four years, every single time he makes a restaurant reservation or he orders food from a pizza shop or wherever it is, when they say what's the name, he says Sonic Blinds. Think about it. This is one town that he's lived in for probably in business 25 or 30 years. He says Sonic Blinds. Every time he orders a pizza, he orders anything, or he makes a reservation. Do you know how much business he said over the years that has tentacled out from the restaurant that him and his wife love and prefer that like one time, all of a sudden, here comes a phone call. Oh, how did you hear about us? I, You know, you guys come in here for reservations often enough through the year. I know your name through that. Right. And then, then you do the book work at the restaurant. And then the guy at the restaurant says, I like your draperies. Where did you get them? Oh, you got to call Sonic blinds. They're big customers of mine. I'm a customer. Like literally he started relationships with phone reservations and pizza ordering. I love that thinking outside the box. That is incredible. I never would have thought of that. I never either. And he said, even my kids now, if they order a pizza from Domino's and I'm not home, where, where Sonic Blinds, okay, 22 Smith Road, right? And it's like, what it is, is, is that going to change your business? Are you going to like get a, like a, a half a million dollar client from this because you tried this tomorrow? But we're talking about he's in business probably three decades. This is three decades of utilizing one tactic that he can trace back at this point, tens of thousands of dollars over the years to this one tactic. I love that you said that. Local marketing is a long game. You will get the unicorns occasionally where you go somewhere, you meet someone and they're like, perfect, I was looking for you. Let's have a phone call. (laughs) But often it'll be things like that where a year, two years, five years later, someone will say, oh, I heard you speak at this event. Oh, I met you once at this thing. Oh, you order pizza all the time, whatever it might be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, think about it. All of those places are going to update their design or their window treatments at some point over you being in business 25 years. Yeah. 25, 30 years. And wouldn't you do business with somebody that's been doing business with you for all these years? Yes. That's what I'm saying. Think like you, the human you are. <laughs> like, right? You know, you're like, this guy comes here once a month with his wife for dinner. Let's call him, at least get a quote, right? Yeah. So. Yeah. And it just helps establish you in the community and build that reputation. When your name is heard, people people know you. They talk about you. They, oh, who's that? Oh, she's been here. You know, oh, I saw her on this. And she's got that car magnet I see you driving around. Yeah. It just, it's those little touch points over and over and over again in your community, in your network that really just strengthen your visibility and 
your perception in the community. Yeah, yeah. And they are, again, to the point of introverts, because look, you know, extroverts, you give us a list of people, we'll call them. <laughs> Just give me a list. I don't care if it's cold, hot, medium, whatever. If I got to call it, I'll call it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But that's not the way, you know, most people are wired. And so there does need to be valid ways. And I, I, again, just to use that, the car magnet example, that's like, that's like introverted 101. It's like, I'm telling everybody so all is. day. Right? <laughs> You're right. I'm like, here's who I am, but I don't want to talk to you yet. Just, exactly. just, look, just look at my name on my car while I drive by. <laughs> right. I mean, because there are a billion things. And I think what happens is when we think about local marketing and networking, we do automatically think about walking into the room with 200 people that we don't know. And that is an option. And that is a possibility. And it's also deeply uncomfortable for a lot of people. It, right. And it can be a good thing to do to push yourself out of your comfort zone, too. Sometimes you can be handed a local network of professionals and referral partners. So those can be great things to explore. But I want to make it clear, like you've been saying, too, Luann, it's not the only option. Right. Getting out and right. networking locally does not just mean joining a group and having to eat lunch every week and bring referrals and be terrified. Yes, there are a yes. lot of ways to increase local engagement, to get yourself out there and to become known as the expert you are in the area you service. Exactly. It's reminding me, one of the episodes that Nancy was on, we'll put the link in the show notes. It was, oh my God, it had to be five or six years ago. You might even remember listening to the episode at that point. Um, and the funny thing is, is I always call the episode your business in words episode, but that's not the title of it. That is the significant lesson of the episode. And I really should just go back and retitle the darn thing. You know what I mean? But she ran us through, walked us through how to describe your business in words. You know, she's got that, that thing in your coaching program, I right? sure do. I believe it's one of the free resources she has available. I'm just going to double check that to make oh, sure. Oh, okay. So you look at that while I tell them what it is, because then we can link the free resource in the show notes as well. Um, but basically, she does this very clear, thought out exercise that if you just take a half hour, 45 minutes out of your life with, when you have time to think and breathe, and she walks you through prompts where you end up with, quote unquote, an elevator pitch at the end. That doesn't sound or feel like a stupid elevator pitch. But I have to tell you, you know the number of people I meet. I just came back from being in Germany a week and being in Las Vegas for a week. And I usually will say when somebody introduces himself to me, how are you? What are you? Blah, blah, blah. So where's your business located? I'll ask them. And then I'll say, tell me about your business. What area of the industry are you in? And then I finally ask them, are they making money? That's pretty much my third question. Are you, are you paying yourself? Right. Yeah. Um, but that second question, you know, it's funny. There's some people that answer it and there's some people, Oh, I kind of this, and I sort of that, and I, this and that. And I'm just like, yeah, that's not how this, this shouldn't be that hard. It's like you walk up to a doctor Oh, what do you do? Oh, I don't know. Sometimes I see if people have strep throat. Sometimes I'm not sure if they have a stomach ache. Sometimes I'm, you know, I, you know, they're just, you know, they need their, their blood blue crows checked. Like, what are you talking about? Like, I'm a GP. You know what I mean? Like, like you got to get that clarity on when, especially if you're an introvert, you've got to get that clarity on how to just bang your business out, who you do, what you do, who you do it for, right? Clarity is exactly right. And yes, it is one of Nancy's free resources. Oh. If you go to nancygansacoffer.com, you'll see a free resources button. And I'm sure the link will be in the notes as well. But funny, Luann, Elevator pitch for, is the number one search term that gets people to Nancy. This is her jam is helping people craft those pitches. And I'm so glad you mentioned it because I do think being able to speak succinctly about your business, who you are, what you serve, how you do it, and what the results are, you need that to be able to have these conversations. Yes. And the Your Business in Words, I won't go into all of it because there's been old episodes and it is a free resource that you can access, but the first sentence is who you are three adjectives about you and what you do. It's not yeah. just, I'm Leslie and I'm an interior designer yes. because we might know what that means. Joe Smith, you're meeting, he might have a completely different perception. And there is a big difference between, oh yeah, I'm an interior designer. I decorate for people versus I'm the most passionate, confident, and ridiculous interior designer you've ever met. 
Like right. that's a completely different person. Well, and it also, you know, to your point, you know, people should go to get the resource and go through the exercise because the next levels are beyond that. Because here's the thing, to your point, your garden variety human, you know, if I had a nickel for every time I read one of the designer Facebook posts, that's like, they don't understand what we do. I'm like, hmm, whose fault is that though, sweetie? <laughs> like, really? Like, yeah. could you imagine all the doctors in the world being like, I'm so like over people. They don't know what we do. But then you know how that would happen? You would go to a GP's office and think you're getting your teeth pulled because you're unclear at what office you're at. Okay. Then you could be mad at the doctor because he didn't say, I don't pull teeth. All right. But when we say I'm an interior designer at the gym, at the coffee shop or whatever, it's like, if you want your ideal client, you need to say, I'm an interior designer that specializes in luxury design for construction builds that start at 3 million and above. Or I'm an interior designer that specializes in helping you select the paint colors and rearrange the furniture you already have in your own home to make it look better. They're completely different things. But in your mind, you both say, I'm an interior designer. And you think us on the other side are supposed to get it. Just saying. Yeah, and then when, right, right? Because then when we like, oh, you're an interior designer? Great. You're the luxury design build that's at $3 million above. But you just told me you're a designer. So now I call you and I'm like, could you pick the paints for my, like, first floor? And you're just like, sweetie, you just insulted me. No, see, I didn't. Because I don't know what interior designer means. It exactly. means a thousand things. And getting yeah. clear on your elevator pitch, your business in words, is essential for not only online marketing, but obviously local marketing too, yeah. because there's such power in being able to clearly and quickly and concisely communicate what you do to people and make it memorable as well. Yes. Before I had my official business in words, when I lived in good old Waco, Texas for a number of years, <laughs> land of white shiplap, I used to introduce myself. Hi, I'm Leslie Myrick. I'm an interior designer on a mission to banish beige from Waco. And people <laughs> loved it. And it, you know, people got a sense of my personality. They knew immediately what I was about, that I was not going to give them white walls. And I have nothing against that. It can be a beautiful look, but I'm the one that's going to be putting floral wallpaper on your ceiling, like buck Buckle right. up, let's go. So right. if you can find a way to introduce yourself that is clear and memorable, it's not only going to allow you to be better known in your community as someone who's standing out and being unique, but it invites conversation and it kind of takes that introvert awkwardness away because right. if some, oh, I'm an interior designer. Like that just shuts down the conversation. I'm an interior designer on a mission to banish beige. Like, yes. oh, okay. So tell yes. me about that. That kind of thing can be so helpful when you are talking to people and trying to build those relationships. I mean, this can be standing in line at a coffee shop. You see someone behind you, I don't know, working on a typewriter, not typewriter, geez, who brings a typewriter to a coffee shop? <laughs> Calculator, something you think they're an accountant. Oh, are you an accountant? I'm actually looking for someone. Oh, blah, blah, blah. Right. what do you do? Right. There's all these ways where you can get that little foot in the door to have a conversation. And then you've got that in your arsenal to say who you are. And what you do that, you know, if someone's not interested, fine. They'll keep right. on ordering their coffee and move on. But you never know where those conversations will lead. And having your business in words solidified. And I will say, do the exercise. Write it down. You're not going to say it in person the way you've written right. those four sentences. It's a great right. website bio. Yes. Start practicing it in a way that feels natural to you that yes. you can say with confidence that doesn't feel stupid or uncomfortable to you. 100%. And the thing about it is, is the, the reason, and we both know this, the reason it applies to this conversation is because local marketing is local. It's face-to-face. -face, it's human connection. And so to your point... What is the, like, literally the number one bane of every introvert in the world? It's small talk. They can't stand <laughs> it. They don't want to do it. This is making my head hurt, right? But meanwhile, if you don't take responsibility for helping the conversation get to a deeper level quickly, then you can't really complain that you're, you're engaged in small talk. And I just thought when I remember the power of that conversation with Nancy, because it not only helps crazy people like me that say too many words, right? But it helps that person that really can't stand small talk. Like when you say, yeah. I'm an interior designer who's on a mission to banish beige in Waco, Texas, you literally are inviting 
a true conversation, not just this surface level conversation. My brain goes to a thousand places on that. It's like, well, why is that your mission? Like, what happened to you as a child that you can't stand my walls? And, you know, or it could just be, oh, your house must be super colorful. Tell me about it. Or where do you like color? Is it everywhere or just in certain spots? Like, there's 10 places that I can go in that conversation with you off the top of my head that keep us from, oh, yeah, nice band tonight. And aren't the meatballs great? <laughs> like, like, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Yeah. And for the record, for the record, extroverts don't like small talk either. We just can do it. <laughs> you know, that's a good point. And this is something that I will say, it gets easier the more you do it. And yes, yeah. even with your elevator pitch, even with your business and words, it's going to be uncomfortable. Just yeah. like going live on Instagram for the first time or the first 20 times is uncomfortable. This is a skill. Yeah. So yeah. this takes practice. It takes, and I, I'm broken record here. Get out from behind your computer. Go find a way to talk to somebody. Get yeah. over the awkward. Just be okay with saying hi to people. Nice weather we're having. Oh, you got the caramel macchiato. That's my favorite drink here. <laughs> like whatever it might be. There are so many ways that you can start those conversation. Look them in the eye. Make that connection with them. Show that you are interested and engaged. And you will become someone who is incredibly memorable in that local network of yours, in that local community. Yeah. And then I know one of the things that you guys have talked about, I've heard you say before too, is even if you get somebody that's to your website as opposed to in meeting in local, is to feature your portfolio in a way that calls out the localness of it, right? You know, yes. the clients that are local so that people can be like, oh, that's the neighborhood over or that's that part of town, or right? And that's great for SEO. Anytime that you can put on your website, like for me, I try to sprinkle Atlanta interior designer, Macon interior designer, interior design in Macon all throughout my copy. And in my portfolio, I've got, you know, a whatever, modern farmhouse in Macon, Georgia. This project, like, I'm doing things that are keyword rich online to help with that local engagement, yeah. to help with that local awareness. So you're right. It's not just look at this beautiful kitchen I did, but <laughs> oh, that's in make oh, that's in this part of town. Oh, that's in this neighborhood, especially mm -hmm. like in Atlanta. There's lots of cities where the neighborhoods have names and those names matter and people yes. know what those neighborhoods mean. So yeah. do you have that in your area? Are you in a city where it's, or a town where just the name is good? Mm -hmm. Or are you working in specific neighborhoods that have a feeling, a vibe that you want to connect with? Put those words on your website too. Mm -hmm. And then when you meet somebody, oh, you, you live in blah, blah. I just finished a project there. I'll send you a link. It's in my portfolio. There's right. ways that you can direct people back online too and keep them in your world, let them get to know you even further than a face-to-face -face conversation can. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then another tactic um, that I, I, I've over the years had designers mention as a tactic, and I know that you guys also are a proponent of it, is, you know, whether it's a blog post or whatever, but it's connecting with those local businesses, that coffee shop that you go to and work at once a week and maybe do a blog post about how you work there or whatever it is just to, like you said, cre create more awareness of your business within the community. Right. Yes. I love that idea. And that's something that when I feature a project, I make sure that I say like, I just literally this morning, I published a post about my own home, like Macon, Georgia, interior design of a living room. Recently, I did a post like my five favorite artists in Macon, like wow. visual artists. I have a post scheduled for this summer and I want to do my five favorite places to dine in Macon. So I'm tying in some of it has to do with design. Some of it doesn't, but it has to do with the local community, what I'm interested in, where my ideal clients would be interested in being, where people might be Googling. I can then tag those artists, tag those restaurants, tag those coffee shops, and then they share the blog post. And all of a sudden, my reach in the community has gone huge. Right, right. And again, that's where you have to put your human hat on. Because if you were sitting there looking at your Instagram and all of a sudden, you know, some, you know, painter or wallpaper guy or restaurant owner or coffee shop tagged you and said, up, oh, our favorite designer had her coffee and her meeting here this week. Here she is. You're not going to be like, I cannot believe you just told everybody about me. <laughs> like, you're like, you're like, oh my God, I got tagged. That's cool. Like, let me repost. You know what I mean? Yes. So it is, it's a, you know, it's a, 
I love the idea of creating the awareness in the community of who your business is. And you can do that through charitable works, you know, getting involved with, you know, the Lions Club in town or whatever the different things are, the PTA and the fundraisers and stuff, however you do it. But it's just making like it's to me, it's like the personification of your business. Yeah. Right. It's, you're becoming more than just like the Instagram feed people see or the website. You are a real person in this yeah. world going to the same places that the people watching you do. Like, oh, I love that coffee shop. Oh, that's my favorite dinner restaurant. And again, there are these points of connections where people, ideal clients, potential clients start to see more of you as a whole. It's not just Leslie the designer, but Leslie the designer loves this coffee shop and this restaurant. And I love this coffee shop and restaurant. And, right. you know, I should call her. And it just builds, it, again, it's those little touch points too. You never know who is seeing what you're creating. You never know who you're going to get to talk to, who someone you talk to will talk to. Right. It's it's a wild, wild world when you are willing to put yourself out there to connect locally in person and to make those local connections online as well. Yes. Yeah. So, so this is basically what we've covered is why local is important and kind of how to do it, how to do it and how to increase the engagement, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. But then the last thing is, is measuring the success of it. So what are your thoughts on that? How do you and Nancy, you know, suggest that we measure success on that? So the first one, and if you're not doing this already, go do this today, track where your leads come from. There should be a, how did you hear about me field on your intake form, your initial questionnaire, or make sure you ask it on your discovery call. That is absolutely the basis of it. And you mentioned this earlier, Luann, someone might say Instagram, but it was really my sister's brother-in-law's uncle's cousin that <laughs> told me about you. And I saw this, but start gathering that data, find out where people are hearing about you, because that's going to give you a lot of valuable information. If you want to go a step further, sometimes I will not only track my leads, but internally, I will kind of give the job a grade, like A, B, C, D. And ah. it's interesting to filter it later, like where did all the A jobs come from versus yeah. the jobs that I kind of rated as a D or like they didn't come to anything. Start to see if there's any correlation there because that also helps you further fine tune your marketing. It's just not, it's not just about the volume of leads you're getting. Where are the best leads coming from? Mm -hmm. And I would, you know, dollars to donuts. I'm guessing most of them are <laughs> referrals, local, some sort of connection. And of course, yes, not knocking Google and the online stuff that has its place. And that's probably part of your strategy as well. But there's probably a lot more coming from local and in person than you realize. And they're likely better, and I'm air quoting that, whatever that means to you, better projects than some of the others are. Yeah. And I would tell you that, um, like for window works, mm -hmm. anytime anybody says Google website, Instagram, Facebook, yes, that's what the intake form is capturing. Cause that's what they did. But our sales team knows when you're in the house, you need to get next level on that. Cause you know, maybe it is window treatments near me. Maybe it is a tr total Google search result. But I would say seven out of 10 times, it's not. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's literally what they say. And then, by the way, our next thing is if they're like, no, I actually never heard of you. I searched, you know, then it's like, what words did you search? We literally ask, what did you put in there? You know, so I love that. And it is important to track it all because usually your feeling on it isn't quite right. <laughs> like it, it isn't That's a it's great like point. most of our leads come from and then when we track them we're like oh actually most of them don't and yeah. also the point of the abcd leads it's the same thing like i know lots of people do very well with well i shouldn't say that i think some designers do fairly well with like angie's list or something like that right but like we found with window works no it is not our target client like absolutely not these are the people that typically are you know it's just it's just i'm just going to say it's just not our target client and so it doesn't matter how much we invest in that by and by when we review the, in the sales team meeting the jobs that don't close or never really get to a consultation are all, so we're just like, okay, why do we keep trying to get, you know, sugar out of this thing? It's like, stop it. <laughs> yes. And that's, you know, so part of tracking it is knowing that because you're right. If you're putting all this money into one marketing channel and you realize you're either getting no leads or garbage leads, go focus on something that you know is bringing you business. Mm -hmm. Where are your best projects coming from? Do more of that. And it's yes. often 
relationship building. Yeah. Another thing to look out for is increases in your website traffic because more people finding you means more people are going to Google you and then figure you out online. There's always going to be that on, like no one's just going to hire you without checking you out, without nope. looking at your videos, looking at your portfolio, reading on your website copy. So watch for increases in your website traffic and understand those statistics. Like what does that mean that there's an increase? What has changed? Did you mm. change copy on your website to add more local keywords? Did you speak at an event? What has changed and where are people coming from? This is stuff that can be done at a super nerdy level in Google Analytics. I do not touch it, but if you've got someone on your team that does, you can do that. And of course, pay attention to your increase in social media engagement. Are you mm. getting more likes, comments, views, reach, shares, from who? Like, are people sharing your and posts? And by doing they... what? Yes. Right? Like, what kinds of posts re result in more engagement, right? Bingo. And yeah, your Google like... My Business page as well. That is, again, online, but it is about your local business. Check the kind of traffic you're getting there. Are you posting there regularly? Are you updating your listing? Are you asking for reviews? That is the online component, but that has a huge impact on your local marketing. Play nice with the Google gods. Don't mess with them. Oh, <laughs> it's the truth. The googly man, we have to keep happy, right? The googly man. But the thing is that even that has a local aspect to it because if you are encouraging and asking your current clients to review you on Google, when the new prospective clients come, if they see, you know, Sandy M there, they might be like, oh my God, like she's describing what she did in her house. I know her, you know what I mean? Like, and then that's that next level of like, oh, local connection. Like, oh, that's somebody in my pond that knows this person. And I was already kind of interested in this designer. And now I have more social proof that someone else, you know, that I know that thinks and speaks and talks like me. Like, yeah. That. Yeah, I yeah. hired a music teacher for my son because I saw a testimonial on their website from a friend. I was like, well, yeah, there you see? go. That's exactly and the it. same That's thing exact works in this. They see a friend's name on Google. They see it on your website somewhere. Oh, I know that person. Oh, okay. Right. Like this, this girl's legit. I'm going to hire yeah. her. <laughs> exactly. I love it. So these are all the kinds of things that come up in the Profit Insiders Academy, right? Like, you know, it's one lane. There's lots of lanes in there. I love right? that you said that. Yes, this is one lane. Marketing is a huge component of it because I would say one of the number one questions we hear is like, I don't don't have a full pipeline. How do I reach new clients? So we do focus a lot on marketing, which obviously impacts your pipeline, your sales, your business growth, and your profitability, your success. The Profit Insiders Academy year-long program, though, really covers every aspect of your business from what you're charging, how you are charging, what your services are, marketing, SEO. My gosh, there's 24 lessons. I'm trying to think of all the content we do. Marketing is a huge keystone. And making sure that not only are you marketing and getting out there, but once you've got leads in the door, are you profitable? Are you pricing right? Can you sustain this as a business? So it's a really amazing holistic program. It's a one-year program, coaching mastermind, and it is incredible the transformations that we're seeing in these designers from the start of the year to the confidence and the clarity and honestly, the profitability they have by the end of that 12 months. Yeah, I love it. I love it so much. I mean, one of the things that Nancy and I connect on eight years ago when we met this month, eight years Aww. ago, yep, um, the podcast was, I think, I don't know, two weeks old and we got connected. And there were a lot of, like I said, a lot of similarities in our background and the way we came to our business experience. Um, but the big connection was that she always from the beginning was like, I need to teach people how to make money. Like, yeah. And I'm like, me too. That's what I have to do too. Like, like we just connected on that. It's like all of the stuff connects to it. If we are showing up physically well, if we're showing up rested, if we're showing up like you were talking earlier about the, the nice boundaries around your life so that today, this moment, I'm a mom, this moment, I'm a coach, this moment, yeah. I'm a designer, this moment, I'm a wife, I'm, this moment, I'm a woman, right? Like we have to do all the little things that ultimately create the business, but the purpose of the business is to be profitable. That's the point. Like, Other, otherwise, you have an expensive like, hobby. 
Yes. And her and I just like banged on that together from the like, yes. You know what I mean? Like we're not embarrassed that we're here to make money. Like that's like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like that's the point of it. That's so everything else can happen. That's so you can have a membership at the gym. That's so that you can get your hair dyed. You know what I'm saying? Like it's all the things and um, it all contributes to it. And every single one of us, I mean, the whole world, every person in the world doesn't get up and go to work, but a whole lot of the world does. So if what you love is being a designer, you should be able to get up and do it and have it make a living for you, make it a lifestyle for you, make it wealth for yourself, right? Yeah. I mean, this is a gift and a talent we have as designers, and I know we would all do it for free. I know I know, I am a designer. I get it. It's fun. It's creative. And guess what? You're allowed to be well compensated for that. I feel like there's part of us, especially as women, that feel like, well, if we like we've suffered for it, yes. we can get paid. Like if someone asked me to be their bookkeeper, I'd be like, I'm charging you a thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> Screw this. And I would have no qualms doing that because I'm <laughs> I suck at it. I hate it. In this case, it can be really hard to, as Sandra Funk says, stand in your space. Yes. And to own the fact that you have a gift, you have a talent, you have a skill, you are a smart lady, That's you know it. your stuff. You've got a great elevator pitch. You do great work. You're a good communicator. It is okay to say, this is what I do, how I do it, and this is what I charge. And when you get that pipeline in, the more practice you get giving those numbers and telling people, this is, you know, even here's my two-hour consultation. The fee is X. How's Thursday at two o'clock? Right. You talk about past the salt, just starting yep, to get Jerry really Taylor. neutral. <laughs> yeah. Talking about money where it's okay to just say, I mean, not in these words, but I'm expensive and I'm worth it. Yeah. I mean, you know, and that's what it is. There's, that's really what it is. It's figuring out what are the words that convey that, that are words that you can say, yes. right? Because we are always going to say it on our own way, right? And so my way is a different way than your way, from Nancy's way to somebody else's way. But the, the thing is that it, the permission to, to make money doing yeah. what you love just because you love it. I mean, you know, I think like, you know, I always use Derek Jeter, you know, he loves playing baseball. He didn't do it for free. I guarantee you he would play <laughs> baseball every day. What grown adult wouldn't play a game every day for the rest of their lives? Yeah. Right? But it's like, you got to make money. You got to provide for your family. You got to provide for yourself. You got to provide for your friends and all the things you want to do for all the people in your world. Yes. So you bring great value. Yeah. Be grateful that you have a talent that can earn an income. You just have to turn it into an earning income. And don't be afraid to get out there and tell people who you are and what you do. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Locally. Yes. That's where the money is, people. <laughs> In your neighborhood. Oh, that's it. So now I feel like I recall that you can't just join Profit Insiders whenever you feel like it. I feel like you have open dates and stuff like that because you do like year-long cohorts. So it's not rolling admission, right? No, that is correct. It is okay. a one-year program. Our next group starts on May 2nd, so right around okay. the corner. And there will be a link in the show notes, and it's on Nancy's website, nancyganzacoffer.com, to apply. When you apply, you will get a link to book a call on Nancy's calendar. If you're a slam dunk, this is for me, duh, go ahead and do this. If you're not sure, you have more questions, please go ahead and apply and get on Nancy's calendar anyway. She is, I mean, you've heard her on the show before. She is very direct and forthright. If it is a fit for you, she will tell you. And if it is not, she will absolutely direct you to whatever might be a better fit for where you are in business. But these groups are incredible. They're small and intimate. It really becomes this very... I don't know. It's, it's like a mastermind group. And we've yes. had groups that have wrapped that they all stay on a Voxer channel together. Sure. And they are still supporting each other and asking each other questions and getting feedback. And it's a wonderful thing. So we would love to have you in our next Profit Insiders Academy group starting in May. So please click the link and apply any questions. We are here for you. And it's going to be a great group. I'm excited to see who joins and what things look like next May for them. Yeah, yeah. And I will just say that Nancy has been on the show a couple of times going into more detail on the deliverables of the Profit Insiders group. So if you feel like I got to listen to that before I fill out the form, you've got a little bit of time. Don't dilly dally because you don't want to miss your opportunity to get in. But we, we have had those shows where she goes into the unlimited Voxer support and the weekly, you know, the, the daily, hey, how are you's from the 
Nancy and all the things. So there's lots of deliverables with the coaching program. Um, and of course, all of the links will be in the show notes. So, well, thank you, Leslie, so much for being here. And I love, I love talking about the power of local marketing. Um, you know, you know me, I grew up on just local marketing. That was it, period, end of discussion. There was no websites. There was no nothing. There was no phones and all of that stuff. <laughs> there was electricity, though, I will tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, thanks tons for being here, Leslie. Luann, thank you so much for having me. It is always a pleasure. Hope you have a wonderful day. As always, Leslie proves herself to be a hashtag smart lady, right? I will never forget when I learned that Leslie, when she said to me that she's actually an introvert. You see, because my first meetings with Leslie were that she reached out to me on the podcast and then the opportunities in person. You know, you meet her and she's bubbly and she's she's outgoing and she's vivacious, okay? But she was one of the many introverts over the course of the podcast and coaching with many of you over the years that I learned that being introverted isn't shy. It doesn't always mean that you're shy or that you don't like to be around other people. It might mean that you need to charge, you know, recharge. You can't do it for 24 seven, but you can be both. Rachel Moriarty also shocked me in that way too, right? So I know that many of you are like Leslie, that small talk, introducing to yourself to people you don't know, that this is tiring and it feels draining to you, right? And so the thing is, this entire local marketing thing that Leslie is talking to us about might not sound like a fun thing to do, and I get it. But here's the thing, and this is Leslie's point. In so many of these cases, you are already out there. You're already at the coffee shop or the restaurant, or the gym, or the PTA? Are you taking advantage of the opportunity to connect with the people, potential people that might already know and like you, but just don't know that, hey, you're an interior designer. You go and get your latte every day, but you never have a little conversation. This is what she's talking about. She's not talking about passing your card, your business cards around in a setting where everybody is like, you know, just like vying for five seconds of worthless attention, right? She's talking about this entire laundry list of potential places that you and me are already going to and how you need to capitalize on these opportunities, okay? Now, she gave us this list. We captured it on a checklist. We added some of some more things to it and you can have it as a goodie so that you can have it right by your desk and each week you can look for and remind yourself that you can do local marketing. Go to luannigara.com forward slash goodies. All right, now I want to reemphasize the part of the conversation that Leslie and I had about elevator pitches, okay? Because this is the key to making this local marketing work in the orga organic way that she's talking about in all the places all, you already go. You need to know how to describe yourself in a succinct, memorable way in a few sentences, okay? Can you do that? And if you can, do you do it? <laughs> right? Like, or do you just say, hi, I'm Sally, right? So, because the thing is, even though this is business 101, my friends, I promise you, the largest majority of business owners are not out there describing their businesses, telling people about what they do and doing it in a way that invites conversation. All right? So don't be in that group. Be in the group that can leverage the local opportunities and can begin to establish these connections that can lead to building up your business consistently over time. I highly suggest that you get Nancy's free resource on this and take the time to get your business in words down the right way. This is an awesome exercise that Nancy has developed. She shared it on the podcast several years ago. We will link both the resource and the podcast episode in the show notes. All right. Now we know this works. You know that it works. You know it. I don't care if you like to do it or not. You know, Leslie is right and that this works. Okay. But despite knowing it works, many want to just put up their website and some social media posts and wait for people to knock on the door. 
Okay. That's just not going to happen. And how about that little statistic that Leslie shared that the world as we know it has changed. And now we need 15 to 18 touch points with a potential consumer before they actually cognitively remember who we are and what we are. It's insane. We're inundated with things coming across our face and all the different things. And so it is so critical that you set yourself apart in the way that Leslie is suggesting. Okay. So thank you, Leslie, for such a great conversation. I loved it so much. And I want to encourage you if their Profit Insiders program for interior designers sounds like you, you want to head over to the website and check it out. The next cohort is starting in May 2024. It's a year long program. Do not miss the opportunity. You have plenty of time left in 2024 to get your business on a profitable track. And Nancy and Leslie are two people who 1000% can help you do that. Thank you tons for listening today. Decide to be excellent. Thank you for joining me today. This podcast is a production of Luann Nigara Inc. If you want to know more about me, my books, or Luann University, go to luannnigara.com. And if you are interested in having Window Works help you with your next window treatment or awning project in the New York, New Jersey metro area, go to windowworksnj.com to learn more. Have an excellent day.